Welcome to the video solutions for the City and Guilds Functional Skills English Level 2 Writing Sample Paper 1. In this video we will go through the questions and you can get a better idea of what you want your answers to look like, as well as what to look out for when planning your answers. Please note that the sample answers in this video contain several errors and would not gain full marks during the exam. So let's quickly look at what you will be marked on. So there are different categories for marking, including written composition and spelling, punctuation and grammar. So for your written composition, overall 56% of your marks will be written composition and 44% will be spelling, punctuation and grammar. So the things that you'll be assessed on include your punctuation, grammar, spelling, having clear writing that makes sense, writing in appropriate detail and length, using organisational features and organisational markers in your writing, using appropriate language and register, and using complex sentences. So the first question. You have recently been on two different work placements. You were given the first placement, but you found it to be quite boring and irrelevant to your future career path. You chose the second one yourself and found it much more interesting and beneficial because it was more relevant to your career plans. Your task is to write a blog about your experiences aimed at people preparing for work experience. Your blog should encourage people to seek out their own work placements in an area that interests them and explain how it will benefit their career development. You should write around five to eight paragraphs. So in this question, we are being asked to use this context here to write about your experiences. So you need to read these really carefully to think about these experiences and come up with something creative to say about them. So the first placement is quite boring and you were given it rather than looking for it yourself and you found it to be irrelevant to your future career path. So you need to think about what boring aspects of the placement you might have done and in what ways it was irrelevant to your future career path, what career path you actually want to go on. And then that you chose the second one yourself and you found it more interesting and beneficial. So you want to think about reasons that you might find the second one more interesting. You might want to think about details that um, of things that happened during the placement that you liked and disliked. And it says that this placement was more relevant to your career plans. So you could go into a bit of detail about your career plans there and how this placement helped you with those. So because we are writing a blog, we need to think about the correct formatting and organisational features that are appropriate to a blog. And we are aiming at people who are preparing for work experience. So this is our audience here. People who are probably quite young and they are looking for work experience similar to what you have experienced. So you're going to advise them and you should encourage them to seek out their own work placements. So considering that you were given the first placement and you didn't enjoy it and you chose the second one yourself, um, it would be a good idea to encourage them to seek out their own work placements that might be more relevant to their career plans. So in an area that interests them and then explain how it would benefit them, how it would benefit their career development. So there's quite a lot that you can write about here and it's a really good idea to use this space to make a plan, um, jot down some ideas, maybe use bullet points or a spider diagram to sort of come up with ideas and then create a kind of structure for your writing as well. So we're going to look at an example answer now that is um, quite good, but it wouldn't get top marks. And we'll explain the sort of positives and negatives of this answer. So 
work placements, how to make the most of them. I was at the stage in college where I had to find a work placement. Like many students, I didn't really know how to go about it, so I did nothing. The college sorted out my placement instead. Great, you might think. Well, it wasn't. Because I couldn't be bothered to find a placement, the one they found for me turned out to be totally irrelevant to my chosen career path. I planned to own my own catering company one day, but the placement they gave me was in an office performing filing and photocopying tasks. I guess the only thing it taught me was that I definitely do not want to work in an office. Even though I only attended for one week, all the time I was wishing that I had found my own placement. As soon as I left that placement, I started to look for another one by doing a simple search on the internet for local catering companies. After about 10 minutes, I had a list of 15 companies that I could contact. I updated my CV, it's got to be done, and wrote a cover letter. Then I sent the documents to all 15 companies. I received four responses and one placement offer. I jumped at the chance. What was it like? It was fantastic. I helped find new customers, I visited customers to discuss menus, I designed table layouts, I booked venues, I helped prepare food, I waited on tables, I helped with accounts, and yes, I did some filing. But at least it was for a company I cared about. There is no doubt that this placement has helped me in lots of ways, and the right placement would really help you. Don't rely on others to do the work for you. Go out and find your own placement in a business that interests you. It will teach you so many valuable things about that sector and may even result in a permanent job offer. Go for it. So let's take a look at how this model answer fills the requirements of the marking criteria. So to start with, let's look at the punctuation that has been used. So this student has correctly used capital letters and full stops for every single sentence, so that is a very good start. Remember that you also need to use capital letters for the word I and any proper nouns like people's names. We've also got a range of commas used throughout the answer to add some further detail to sentences and to create lists. So a good example of this is here, as soon as I left that placement, comma, I started to look for another one by doing a simple search on the internet and then after 10 minutes, comma, I had a list of 15 companies and then I updated my CV and wrote a cover letter, comma, then I sent the documents. So these commas have been used to give some structure to the answer, to explain the narrative in order and to join sentences together. What other punctuation have we got here? Well, we have some apostrophes to shorten words. So in the first paragraph, we have words like wasn't, and we've also got didn't. So instead of was not and did not, we've got some apostrophes used to shorten these words and create an informal tone that is suitable for a blog post. We've also got a dash. These are useful to add some ideas um, and sort of flesh out your ideas more fully. So great, you might think. Um, and we've also got some brackets here to add more information and ideas again. So it's got to be done. And then in this paragraph here, we have a use of a question mark. So we've got a good rhetorical question there. What was it like to address what the reader might be thinking, what they might be wondering about? And then the student goes on to answer this question. So we've got lots of varied use of punctuation and it's generally correct as well. So they would get high marks for punctuation. Now let's think about the grammar use in the answer. So for grammar to be correct, sentences need to be accurate and make sense on their own. Often the best way to see if your grammar is accurate is to try and imagine someone reading it out loud. Now we've read the whole of this answer out loud and all of it made sense. There were no mistakes 
um, and you've just got to make sure that you're trying to avoid any common mistakes um, using the wrong verbs or nouns in your answers. So make sure that everything matches up and makes sense. Looking at the spelling, this student has spelled quite a lot of words correctly and generally their incorrect spellings don't impede meaning, but they do have quite a few incorrectly spelled words. Um, for example, in the second paragraph here, um, they use filling instead of filing and that slightly hinders meaning in the response because it doesn't have the same meaning, doesn't have the intended meaning. And we also have um, think instead of thing. So the only thing it taught me instead of the only thing it taught me. Again, that is a word with an incorrect meaning. So that would take off a couple of marks there. Further on, we have a missing letter in fantastic. We've just got fantastic. And we've got that use of filling instead of filing again. And finally, we've got booked venues. Venues should have an E before the S at the end. Um, so that says Venus instead, which is a planet and clearly has a different meaning to what the student intended. So just make sure that when you are spelling, you are making sure to correct any incorrect spellings and just practice your spelling before the exam, making sure that you're comfortable with spelling simple words and some more complex words correctly. Another point that you'll be marked on is clarity. Um, so clarity just means is the response clear? Does all of it make sense when you read it out loud? And for this answer, it's a very clear answer. Um, it's obvious what the person is talking about. So they will get high marks for clarity. Does the answer have an appropriate length and does it go into an appropriate uh, level of detail? Well, there's quite a lot written here, um, a range of details that are relevant to the task in the question. They've talked about the first and second placements that they were given and right at the end, they have tried to encourage people to seek their own work placements. So we've got the first work placement mentioned here um, that was given to them, um, one that was found for them. Um, and that was stated in the exam instructions in the question. And then they go on to explain their own career ambitions. They, they, they plan to own a catering company. Um, so that links to the future career path that you've been asked to talk about. And then they give a lot more details. They explain what happened during each placement, um, filing and copy, photocopying tasks, um, and then in the second placement, helping to find new customers, visiting customers. Um, so they've explained what they did in quite a lot of detail there. And then they've given some quite detailed opinions as well. At least it was for a company I cared about. That's an opinion there that they've given. And they've given a somewhat detailed account of how people can find their own placements. Um, could add some more detail about this here. It only touches on this briefly. Um, could tell people that they can look online and give so, sort of more encouragement to find placements. But this is definitely enough detail um, for the response. It's an appropriate length and they have fulfilled the criteria in the question. Now, what about the formatting and organization? So whenever you write an answer, 
you should choose an appropriate range of organizational features. These are sometimes called formatting features, meaning it's exactly the same thing that you can use in your writing to make it clearer and kind of break it up into different sections to make it easier to read. So we've been asked to write a blog post, focusing on a blog, and that is key to the kinds of organizational features that we're going to expect. So at the top here, we have a heading that is very appropriate for a blog. And indeed, you would probably need a heading for a blog post. And then we've got some appropriate paragraphing as well, with each paragraph talking about a slightly different topic. So you could be more adventurous and use subheadings and other features like bullet pointed lists. But overall, this is a satisfactory answer in terms of formatting and organization. And all of these paragraphs are following each other in quite a logical, chronological order. So paragraph one about the first placement, paragraph two going into a bit more detail about what that placement was like. Paragraph three explains what they did to get the second placement. Paragraph four um, explains what the second placement was like. And then finally, paragraph five is giving some advice about work placements. So that's quite a logical structure and all of the paragraphs make sense. It makes sense to break it up like this. Another one of the things that you'll be marked on during your exam is cohesion. So this essentially means making sure that you use organizational markers. So connect connectives and conjunctives like and, but, and so to link everything together, um, join up your ideas so that they flow and are cohesive and they have a clear meaning. So this answer is particularly cohesive. Um, the sentences flow on from one another and they're all linked together and all sentences that are in the same paragraph are all about the same thing. So for example, in the third paragraph, um, we start by linking to the previous paragraph as soon as I left that placement. So here we're linking to the placement that we've just talked about. I started to look for another one by doing a simple search on the internet for local catering companies and then the next sentence after about 10 minutes relates to the previous sentence. So they've been searching on the internet for 10 minutes. I had a list of 15 companies that I could contact and then they explain what they did next. So it's in a logical sequence in an order of things that they did. I updated my CV and wrote a cover letter. Then I sent the documents to all 15 companies. And then again, we've got sort of a chronological order talking about events as they happen in time. I received four responses and one placement offer. I jumped at the chance. So all of the sentences linked together, um, a bit like puzzle pieces that go together to make a jigsaw. And then we've got paragraphs linking to each other as well. Um, so once they got their placement, um, they jumped at the chance and then they discuss the placement here. So everything sort of matches up, links together really well, and the answer is very cohesive. You'll also have to think about the language and register that you're using when you're writing. So you want your writing to have the right kind of tone and style to match up with the reader that it's aimed at and also the purpose of the text. So we know from the question that the purpose of this text is to um, explain what happened on two different work placements. So we're blogging about our experiences and the audience are people preparing for work experience. So how is this answer adapted to that audience and purpose? Well, it is suited to the audience because it is focused on the topic of work experience throughout. We've got a generally positive conversational tone to really engage with the reader and try to um, encourage them to find some work experience. So we have things like exclamation marks to really draw the reader in. And then we have um, this sort of question and answer structure. What was it like? It was fantastic. And um, to try to um, draw the reader into the text and anticipate any questions that they might ask. 
We've also got um, a bit of direct address that has been used. Um, so we've got um, would really help you uh, find your own placement and it will teach you so many valuable things. So using the word you to speak directly to the reader there. This makes the text quite informal and it also uses informal idioms. Um, so we've got sayings like uh, go for it and I jumped at the chance to make it slightly more informal. Um, we're probably talking to young people here if they're looking for work experience. So this text is attempting to engage with these young people and to teach them a little bit about um, some work experience. So overall, it's really well suited to the audience and purpose, and you should make sure that you are consistently focusing on the audience and purpose when you, whenever you are writing a text. Finally, you need to make sure that you're trying to use some longer sentences that show the examiner that you can connect up um, some multiple ideas within one sentence. So how do we do that? Well, let's take a look at an example sentence. So we've got, as soon as I left that placement, I started to look for another one by doing a simple search on the internet for local catering companies. So what makes this a good sentence? Well, they've used a um, sort of temporal marker, so indicating the time as soon as they left the placement. So we've got an indication of when this happened. And then I started to look for another one. So they've said um, when they did it and what they did. And then they've explained how they did it using this connective word by. So I started to look for another one by doing a simple search on the internet for local catering companies. So we've got multiple ideas that have been connected together here. And you should try to use some longer sentences in your answers that connect um, this many ideas or even more ideas together. But make sure that your sentences are still making sense. So don't um, overdo it and write incredibly long sentences that start to become confusing for the reader. So overall, the student's given a really effective response to this question. They did have a few spelling errors and things like that, but they have effectively answered the question by addressing each point here. The answer makes sense and it flows effectively. They've used correct formatting and have effectively used paragraphs. Spelling is generally accurate and they've correctly used a range of punctuation to make writing appropriate for the audience and purpose specified in the question, they've made sure that they've read the question carefully and then tailored their response to the audience. So overall, they have definitely written a blog as required by the question. They've focused on the topic of work experience. They've encouraged people to seek out their own work placements in an area that interests them. They've explained their first placement and their second placement in terms of what happened and how it affected their career plans. So a good response all in all. And you should try to plan your answer to be quite similar to this one, to consider um, lots of different detailed ideas in relation to the question. Question two. It is well known that celebrities use the media to help their careers but they don't seem to like it when the media covers their private lives. Is it right how the media treats celebrities? How do celebrities benefit from the media? And how does the media benefit from celebrities? Should anything be off limits? Or can the media cover everything about celebrities and their private lives? Your task is to write an article for a student magazine exploring the extent to which it is fair that the private lives of celebrities are covered in the media. Your suggested word count is 250 to 300 words. 
So in these, this question, we need to focus on celebrities and the media. So these are the main topics that we're going to talk about. And we're going to be answering these questions here. We're going to consider if it is right how the media treats celebrities, how it covers their private lives. We need to see how celebrities benefit from media and how media benefits from celebrities. And we need to focus on whether anything should be off limits to the media, whether the private lives of celebrities should be shown to the public or not. The form that we're using to write in the text type here is an article and it is for a student magazine. So our audience will be students. And we want to explore whether it is fair that the private lives of celebrities are covered in the media. So we've got lots of different ideas that we could write about here. Um, we could discuss, um, we could decide that it is right how the media treats celebrities or we could decide that it isn't right. Um, there's lots of scope to give our opinions and we can also give some facts about the media and how um, it benefits from celebrities and vice versa. So before you start writing, you should plan your answer. You could start by creating a mind map, for example, and then you could use bullet points or numbers to decide an order in which you're going to structure your paragraphs. So let's have a quick read of the answer before we evaluate why this is a good answer overall. Celebrities and the media. We've all seen pictures of celebrities in the media standing on the red carpet at a film premiere or posing for photographers outside an award ceremony. We've also seen those pictures of celebrities taken by photographers with long distance lenses as they snap them relaxing in their own time not even knowing they are being photographed. Are both types of photo acceptable? Is it fair that celebrities' private lives are photographed? Let's get one thing straight. Celebrities would not be so famous if it wasn't for the media. If they were not as famous, they wouldn't earn as much money, especially those celebrities who are famous for the sake of fame rather than for any special talent. Therefore, you could argue that the media should be able to get something back from the celebrities. After all, they help to keep the person famous. So perhaps those photos of their private lives, when they do not look so glamorous, are okay. On the other hand, the media also gets something out of the celebrities, because it is us, the consumers, who buy the magazines, log on to the websites and watch the showbiz news. The more we do, the more the media makes money through advertising. So they use each other. Should anything be off limits for photographers? Probably. Private lives are just that, private. But if the photographers are not breaking any laws, then in the eyes of the government, they can take any photos they want. These photographers get paid huge amounts for shots of celebrities. I can't see this changing anytime soon. It's impossible to ask a photographer to accept reduced earnings, but not taking certain photographs when they know another photographer will do it anyway. So now let's go through each of the different criteria that you'll be marked on during your exam and see what this answer does well and what could be improved. So to start with, in terms of punctuation, they've correctly used capital letters and full stops throughout most of the answer here. The only exception is that here they should have used a full stop and there isn't one here. Or they could have used a connective like and there. They've used lots of commas to connect ideas together and they've used those correctly. Now, if you're not sure how to use commas, generally you use a comma whenever you would take a breath if you were reading it out loud. So for example, we've also seen those pictures of celebrities taken by photographers with long distance lenses. Take a breath. As they snap them, take a breath, relaxing in their own time, not even knowing they're being photograph photographed. Other punctuation that has been used here 
include contractions. So we've got apostrophes being used, um, an example of punctuation there, in contractions like wasn't. And we have a dash in the last paragraph to add an extra idea to the sentence. But there are quite a few mistakes in here. So in the first sentence of the first paragraph, um, they mention celebrities' private lives. Now, because they're talking about the private lives of celebrities, celebrities are the owners of their private lives. So they should have used a possessive apostrophe here at the end of celebrities. Now let's look at the grammar. So sentences need to be accurate and they have to make sense on their own. The best way to do this is often to try and imagine someone reading it out loud to see if your writing would make sense. So we do have um, a grammar mistake in here. In the final paragraph here, it says that it's impossible to ask a photographer to accept reduced earnings, but not taking certain photographs when they know another photographer will do it anyway. Now, it's not very clear what this sentence here means. Um, it's a little bit unclear. It's a little bit vague. It doesn't make sense to the reader. Um, the way to fix this would be to Think about exactly what you want to write before you start writing it and read back through your answer to see if everything makes sense. At the end here, it doesn't quite do that. We also have, I can't see this changing anytime soon. This is a grammatical error because no comma or connective like and has been used here. So this last part is grammatically incorrect. Otherwise though, the answer is pretty good. We've got an accurate use of tenses and person throughout. So in the first paragraph, we've got past tense, we've all seen, etc. Um, and this creates a feeling of shared experience and has been used accurately. Everything here makes sense. Um, the questions are in present tense because questions are being asked about celebrities now and whether it is right that they are photographed in the present. And then we've got a good use of singular and plural words. This is being used accurately. So for example, the media is a group of people. So they have explained that the media are a they rather than an it. So the media, they help to keep the person famous. So all of it makes sense apart from when we reach the end there when the grammar goes a bit wrong. The vast majority of spelling in this answer is correct, including lots of tricky words, for example, premier, uh, photographers, um, and photographed. There's lots of words that are quite tricky that have been spelled correctly, glamorous, for example. But we do have some mistakes. So right at the end, it says here, should anything be of limits for photographers? Now the of in this sentence should have a double F and be off. So the meaning has changed here slightly and this doesn't quite make sense as a result. So make sure before the exam that you're comfortable with your spelling and your spelling words correctly on a consistent basis. It's always a good idea to check your spelling after you've written the, your answer. Um, a good way to check your spelling when you're practicing is using the internet or a dictionary, but be aware that you can't do this in the exam, so you need to be prepared for this. 
you'll also be marked on the clarity of your answer. So you've got to make sure that all of your writing makes sense, that you use good spelling, punctuation and grammar to ensure that your meaning is clear. And if you read it aloud, then everything would make sense to the reader. So this answer is quite clear. Most of it makes sense when you read it aloud. Only the last part is a little bit difficult to understand due to some missing words and phrases that make some of the sentences grammatically incorrect. So a good way to check this in the exam is just sort of read it to yourself in your head and see if everything makes sense at the end. Now let's take a look at the level of detail in the answer and the length of the answer as well. So in the question, it's specified that the suggested word count is 250 to 300 words, and that is approximately the length of this answer. So it's an appropriate length for the question. Practicing some questions will give you a good idea of what that sort of word count looks like. Um, as well as length, detail is very important. Your, the detail that you use has to be appropriate. So it has to be appropriate to the question. And this answer uses lots of appropriate details. It addresses all of the bullet points listed in the question. So it discusses, is it right how the media treats celebrities? Well, at the end, it sort of gives a summary of a sort of balanced argument in response to that question. How do celebrities benefit from the media and how does the media benefit from celebrities? This is definitely explained here and here. So we've got celebrities benefiting from the media. They wouldn't be so famous if it wasn't for the media. And we've got the media getting something out of celebrities. So we've addressed that second bullet point. And finally, the third bullet point, should anything be off limits or can the media cover everything about celebrities and their private lives? Well, we've got a little bit of that at the end as well. Should anything be off limits? They've asked a question directly from the question content. And then they've started talking about the private lives of celebrities and whether those should be protected. So, to add detail, you can add information or explain your ideas with some reasons, but make sure that any details that you add are closely related to the question. So if you're struggling with this, if you can't manage to write enough, then make sure that you start planning your answers and generating plenty of ideas using a mind map before you start. Formatting and organisation is another thing that you'll be marked on. So you need to choose an appropriate range of organizational features that you can use in your writing to make it clear and break it up into easily readable sections. So the form that we've been asked to write in here is an article, that is the text type. So articles tend to include headings like the one here, celebrities in the media, and they include paragraphs like have been used here. You could also include the author's name, some subheadings, text boxes, and other features like bullet points to make it more visually appealing and to show the examiner that you know how to use a wide range of organizational features. So the student could have gained some strong marks for that, but their answer is completely acceptable as it is because they've included that heading there and paragraphs appropriately. So you should always make sure to use paragraphs to clearly structure your answer and you should use them when you're introducing new ideas or topics. So in the first paragraph here, we have introduced the topic of celebrities and we're asking some questions to get the reader thinking about celebrities and the media. In the second paragraph, we're moving on to arguments for the media taking whatever pictures they want. The third paragraph elaborates on that previous paragraph to give a sort of counter argument saying that the media also gets something out of celebrities. And then finally, we're going back to the questions that were proposed at the start up here. Are these photos acceptable? And we are making a balanced argument about this, discussing it in detail. 
So overall, the formatting, the organization of the text is logical and appropriate for the article format. To gain high marks in your exam, you should also make sure that your answer is cohesive. So this means that you should link everything together and join up your ideas so that they all flow on from each other effectively. So in this last paragraph here, all of the sentences are about the same thing. We're focusing on the limits of photographers and all of the sentences flow on in a logical order. So should anything be off limits for photographers? And then we've got an answer to this question, probably. And then they elaborate on this by saying private lives are private. And then we have this contrasting word, but to see the other side of the argument, the idea that photographers can take any photos they want. Then they refer back to the photographers they've just mentioned, these photographers, and they explain that it is impossible to ask a photographer to accept reduced earnings. So still talking about photographers and linking up with the rest of the paragraph there to make a really cohesive answer. Now let's look at the language and register that has been used. So language and register should always be suited to the purpose and audience of a text. So the purpose of our text here, we are discussing celebrities and the media, we are trying to decide whether it is right how the media treats celebrities. So the entire answer is very focused on those questions that we want to address, so it's well suited to the purpose. We've also got a sort of for and against structure here um, for celebrities and um, against celebrities for the media. Um, and that really evaluates the questions that have been posed. It's very suited to the audience. So the article that we've written here is written for a student magazine. And this is appropriate for students. It draws the reader in and makes them feel included using this word we frequently in the first paragraph. And then in the second paragraph, we've got direct address saying you could argue to draw the reader in as well. The language is appropriate for a student audience as it's informal. Generally, magazine articles are much more informal than newspaper articles because you're writing to entertain rather than to inform. So we've got lots of informal language here. Um, for example, we've got snap them rather than take pictures of them and we've got let's get one thing straight. So very appropriate to the purpose and audience. Finally, does this answer contain complex sentences? So complex sentences, just to remind you, are sentences with multiple ideas contained within them and they're generally broken up using punctuation like commas. So we do have a good example of this in the last line here. Unfortunately, it doesn't quite make sense, um, but if this sentence had been grammatically correct, then it would definitely be a complex sentence because we've got lots of different clauses here, lots of different ideas that have been linked up. So you should try your best to include a few complex sentences in your answers to show that you can make connections between ideas and information. So overall, this is quite an effective answer. There are some errors in punctuation and grammar, um, but the content is generally pretty good. Um, we have focused on the question and we've answered all of these bullet points here. We've used appropriate headings and paragraphs to structure our answer and most of it makes sense. So altogether, a good answer. Now, when you're thinking about your own answer to this question, try to come up with as many ideas as possible and then choose the very best ones that you know you'll be able to write about effectively.